Um, I'm so excited to talk to you both. Um, but before we go into training and talk about all things running, let's hear a little bit more about yourselves. Like, what's your background and how did you guys uh, get into fitness? Oof. All right, I go first. <laughs> Hi, guys here. Hi, guys at home. Um, so I'm Bex. Um, I'm from London, England. Um, well, Worcestershire, England originally, but came from London before New York. I got into fitness purely by accident, really. I had a career in public relations and advertising for six years, where I was commuting between London and Brighton. Um, and running was my escape from my job. I didn't like it very much in the end. Sorry, old boss. Um, but I found that running was my way to release the stress. And so day by day, I would head out without any watch, without any reason, really, other than just to run. And I kind of found out that I was quite good at it. And um, my uncle, actually, in the end, who's a mentor of mine, he convinced me that it was a very big passion. He could see it and that I should find a way of quitting my job. He didn't quite say those words, but um, sharing that passion with other people. And I literally flew back from America where he lives, um, wrote my resignation letter on the flight and my life changed when I got home. And it just spiraled from there thanks to Nike and now Peloton. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was a crazy story. It sounds, reminds me of like a Forrest Gump. I know. Went out the door and never stopped running. <laughs> oh my God. Ever, people used to call me Gentry the Gump back in London. And like, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that about yeah. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Learned something They'd be like, here she is, here's Gump, like always running around. I hate the underground in London. If anyone's been to London, it's gross, that underground. You're always in someone's sweaty armpit. <laughs> and um, so I used to run everywhere. And I would be the one who was sweating when I arrived to my destination. But yeah, Gump. Way to own it. It's just my way. <laughs> Amazing. The way you say sweaty armpit makes it like not seem as bad, though. It's like really endearing how you just said that. Yeah, um, so I have a very um, not similar story, but I was also a career changer. And hi, guys. My name is Jess. Um, I am from a suburb right north of Boston. And, um, ooh. Hey, Boston. <laughs> yes. Uh, Peabody. I know. And not it's not Peabody. People will be very upset if you go there and you pronounce it Peabody. It's <laughs> Um, and so I went to Trinity College and I played college basketball. I played sports my whole life, um, at, played every sport. But in high school, I was a three-sport captain of soccer, basketball, lacrosse. Went to Trinity. Um, I was a three-year captain there. Um, loved more so just being a part of the team than anything else. I was My kind of like claim to things that I talk about is that I was never necessarily like the best person on the team, but I had by far the most hustle and heart like because I wanted it so badly for my teammates. Um, being part of something bigger than myself has always been something really big for me. Um, so I was there for uh, four years. I studied psychology and Hispanic studies, and then I was obsessed with Teach for America, so that brought me to Houston. So I was in Houston for two years, loved teaching. I taught fifth grade math and third grade everything. Um, I was going to stay there a third year, but then I was recruited to open up an elementary school with just kindergarten in Harlem. And I was like, all right, my parents were kind of pushing me to come back towards the East Coast. So I was like, whatever, I'll try it. So I came back to New York. Um, I was there at, at a school network in Harlem for three years. And you guys are like, what does this have to do with fitness? Don't worry, I'm getting there. Um, <laughs> I was, it's uh, shocking to me too. And so then um, over the three years, like I, I really, I lost myself. I, I went from, you know, I graduated in May of 2010. Um, and within two weeks I was down in Houston and I worked out maybe twice in the first six months. So I went out from doing two a days to two times in six months and I completely lost myself. Um, and so when I was in New York, I started to work out again. You know, I found my niche of like workouts that I, there are so many different boutique studios in New York. And so I was like, okay, I love that instructor. I love this class. I love this vibe. And I had multiple conversations with people and they were like, well, fitness has been such a huge part of your life for so long. Why don't you go into fitness? And I'm like, nope, I've been in education for seven years. I got my master's when I was in Houston. I was like, there's no way I have to do this. And they were like, well, yes, I do believe that you're meant to be a teacher, but maybe you're in the wrong setting. And that is like the, the mind blowing moment of like my life where I was like, oh my gosh. So it's funny now, fast forward, I've been in fitness now for three years. I taught boutique fitness. Um, I taught boxing and I taught HIIT training, weightlifting in um, New York for two years. And I will be at Peloton one year in September. Oh. So yeah, um, it's, and it's crazy because people will say, do you miss teaching? And I say, no, because I still teach. Mm. It's just, I teach adults now. And, and towards my, um, when I was in New York, I skipped the small part. I was a kindergarten teacher, an operations director, assistant principal, 
Wow. Moved home back to Boston to open up a KIPP school um, in the town that my dad grew up in, where he, my dad grew up in a low-income area. I was the assistant principal there. Came back to, and I quit that job in December. And you guys really have no idea of the timeline. It's totally fine. Um, <laughs> and then uh, when I came back to Newark, I was just going to pursue fitness full time. But then um, my school that I was at, at in Harlem, they fired their principal. So I came back as the head principal for six months. And then I quit. And then I was in fitness for good. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Both of you guys had different uh, upbringing yes. or, you know, if you found running different or found fitness differently. Mm -hmm. um, but that's so cool how you guys can start from something totally different, super <laughs> yeah. different, and yes. getting in there. Yes. Um, so now that you have been in the fitness industry for a little bit longer now, uh, how would you guys describe your fitness philosophy if you, if you had any? Oh, hmm. mine, I don't know. I'm, I guess I have, my philosophy revolves always around running. Everything I do is about running. I'm very specific. I used to train boxing. Um, I used to train as a personal trainer. Um, I've gone through very different principles when it comes to fitness, and I've always come back to running. And my philosophy has always been a big balance, but specificity uh, about how we train. I think um, people get very lost now, like Jess was saying, you get lost in your own lives, but we get lost in fitness because there's so much out there. And of course, we wanna try everything. And that's a great part of life is trying everything and finding out what suits you. But when it comes to excelling at something, the, the path is normally a specific path. And I find that's my philosophy. If you're gonna be, you know, you, you've decided you like running marathons, you've done four or five and you're like, right, I'm gonna smash my PR it's time to get very specific about running, not doing five other different classes a week and just bouncing around and, okay, I'm kind of fit, yeah, great, cool. Yeah. It's like, right, you gotta go on five really horrible hard runs a week. <laughs> Suck it up. There you go. Gang initiation, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sore, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's my, yeah, gently does it though. I'm not, um, I'm not an all-in person. If you ever see my Instagram, it's all about running, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not rigorous. Jess and I were actually talking about this last night. Um, I don't count my macros. I don't prepare all my meals. If I want to go out and have a glass of wine with my friends, I do. And people are often very shocked. They're like, really? Like, yeah, because you are only here once. And my story involves more than running. It involves a life. I just happen to be specific about that in my training side of my life. That's so great you touched on that. We'll talk more about fuel yes. and keeping the balance. <laughs> yeah. more about I'm so glad you touched on that. Yeah, we're kind of like the yin to the yang. So um, <laughs> so I, I feel like I was so specific with basketball for so long that, um, and also through my experience with teaching and not just working with students, but their families and hearing the struggles of, I want to be fit. I want to live a better, more well-rounded life, but I don't know how to. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the, the energy, you know? Like we all have so many different things going on in our lives. So my kind of like mantra for like fitness, health and wellness is you don't have to, you get to. Like that's kind of like my thing that I preach all the time. <laughs> And I, I'm like, will it get old one day? And every day I say it to myself and it's never going to get old because I really feel like, I mean, I've had lots of different injuries and you don't really realize how lucky we are to move and get stronger and be healthier regardless of the modality that you choose until you you can't do it anymore for whatever reason, whether it's temporary, whether you do have something traumatic that happens. Um, we really take our bodies for granted so often and it's, we never should. And so I definitely believe, uh, again, um, in terms of like, if you have a specific goal, yes, you definitely have to train and put in the hours. Like I'm a Leo, like I get very intense and very competitive. Um, but at the same time, like it, it's a journey. Um, and I, I know the J word is kind of corny in a lot of ways, but it really is <laughs> like, life is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And um, I feel like, there are ebbs and flows of busy seasons and non-busy seasons and more uh, intense focus on one thing sometime and then a, a focus on something the other time. But generally speaking, it's like we have to think about moving our bodies as a privilege and then build from there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's kind of flow on to the next. So like, you know, you had talked about how there's so many things out there. You know, Peloton's obviously changing the game. Uh, people here at Google have uh, GFIT, go slash GFIT. You guys have a bunch of free classes. Um, and then a, <laughs> like a thousand gyms outside, a million kajillion yeah. apps out there. Yeah. And so they understand the importance of moving their body. They understand the idea of trying so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, but for someone who's brand new, starting into moving their bodies for the first time, uh, what would your advice be to that person to like try something new or to find what they're passionate about? I think, I mean, I weirdly, Jess's mantra is something that I speak to in class because of hearing it from her so often. And I'd say it a lot so in often. class. Like I honestly do, I'm not just saying because she's here, um, but 
it, I agree with it. it. It is a privilege to be able to move your body. And when you sign up to do anything, even if it's the first time, you've made that decision and, and you get to do it if you want to. So it's all about, for me, for the first time doing anything, whether it's the first time going to take any class from yoga to, I don't know, sprint classes. We were talking about sprinting. Mm -hmm. um, you've just got to take it at your level. It's easy, like a Peloton we have on our treads leaderboards. And I always say to people, like, if this is your first time, if you're a beginner class, swipe that leaderboard away. This is your session. Don't worry about anybody else because they're not you. So you have to think about you. You've put the time aside to be here. Don't worry about what they're trying to achieve because they could be completely different. Could be Usain Bolt there under a different guise and you don't know. And this, you know, you're like, how is this person sprinting so fast? <laughs> <laughs> but like, sure. And you're there on your first time. So it's it's very much, you have to be, you have to internalize and think, oops, sorry, I knew I was going to hit that at some point. <laughs> you have to internalize and think about your reason and why you've got up there and why you're taking the opportunity to be able to do this and do the I cans of right. one. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And it's so, yeah, it's everything that you're saying is just like really resonating. I'm <laughs> processing it myself. Um, I think that especially, so Bex has been running for a while and she's really fast, like to the point where she, when we <laughs> knew we were coming, she was like, before she even said, do you want to go for a run? I'm like, I'm setting the pace when we go for a run, okay? <laughs> you're not setting the pace or the distance. Um, but I- <laughs> That's a new part. <laughs> I, yes, I, yes. She only, yeah. Um, but no, so I think that I was a beginner runner in the sense where I either had to be chased or being ch or chasing after a ball in order to run. Like I played sports my whole life. I never ran track. I think I ran track two days in middle school and quit. Um, wasn't for me. But I, so the thing that I really preach again too is that start off, don't run too much too fast. Because I feel like even a bunch of my girlfriends, they're like, oh, now that you're at Peloton, I'm going to take your class. And they start off by taking a 45 minute run. I'm like, no, you should have taken a 20 minute walk plus run for a couple days, couple weeks, because why? What are you trying to prove by taking a 45 minute run? You, haven't, you, you just told me you haven't run since high school. That was like 10 years ago. Right. And so I feel like we do have this sense of pressure that we put on ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And maybe like a leaderboard or something or other p pressures like kind of come into it. But we put so much pressure on ourselves to do so much so quickly. And it's like, no, everyone's a beginner when they start. Mm -hmm. um, and push-ups are something that I love doing in our strength classes. And I literally say every class, put your ego to the side. No ego in here, scale it to the knees, give me full length push-ups, full depth, instead of pulsing your push-ups and complaining how much you hate them later. Okay. It's we have to take the time to scale it back in order and just accept where we are so that we can get to where we wanna be. Awesome. Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, uh, as we are getting closer to the San Francisco Marathon, we'll yeah. start to talk a little bit more about oh, yeah. uh, Peloton running and just running in general. Uh, but first hard hitting question, I know we didn't talk about this earlier, but as Peloton tread instructors, are you guys allowed to run outside? Of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have outdoor classes. Yeah. Oh, that's we so great. Do. Tell me more about that. Yeah, yeah. on Peloton Digital. Um, so, and it, it has GPS and everything now, which yeah. is awesome. So Metrics, now, GPS. yeah, you just put your headphones in, you choose the class, and it's us coaching you outside. <laughs> oh, perfect. So we're it's still in, in your area. <laughs> oh, we're still there. Yeah. Um, so we'll say just like, uh, and we have like all the same available classes. We have walking classes. We have uh, anything from a walking class to an advanced intervals run. Um, and so for things like that, we say you might want to be on a track. You might want to be like in an open field or something because there's going to be a lot of stuff like sprinting, stopping, and you don't want to be in New York City running on the streets and having to worry about, you know, sure. stoplights and things like that. But no, we love it. I'm okay. running Perfect. It's going to clear the air here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, people only see you 100%. on that treadmill yeah. mode. It's like, oh, yeah. they see, they're real people. No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> our, our recently launched marathon training program is yeah. completely outdoor. It okay. is based for outdoor running. Obviously, any speed work you can do inside. So mm -hmm. whether, you know, any coach would prescribe a speed session that you can do indoors or outdoors. Um, but because the run that you're training for, again, specificity, you're running to run outside yeah. for 26.2. So we wrote and um, released the whole program for outdoor. And it's up to you whether you take it indoors. You're not going to see anything on your on your screen, but you're here us talking to you in your ears still. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We're all uh, here lucky enough to be in San Francisco and it's beautiful out here as you guys, if you guys need a reminder. Uh, <laughs> oh my, we'll so remind it's, you, it's, it's so beautiful here. There you go. Yeah. Must Coming from the East Coast, Must be New York City weather right, right now. Is yeah. The summer is special in the city. Humidity does not suit us. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you guys train outside, where where do you guys like to run outside? Where's your most favorite place to run? For me, West Side Highway in New York. Yeah. It's just a dream. Uh, coming from London, which was stop start. I used to call London hit training. Like whenever you're <laughs> running in London, it's like, <laughs> okay, 
done. Even the river, running along the river in London, if anyone's ever done that, it's just crowded, it's narrow. Like, obviously everything in America is bigger and wider. You've got way more space. Um, but uh, the West Side Highway here is just up and down. My favorite run is going up from my apartment to George Washington Bridge, which is north uh, and then back. It's just a 16 mile, peaceful, beautiful run. <laughs> Guys, I apologize. Yeah, just an easy 16, yeah, it's totally fine. <laughs> I'm vibing with you as a track runner and as a, yeah, as yeah. a basketball player. Literally, on it's Instagram, like, like my favorite thing is she'll post like, you know, I just did an awesome 10 mile recovery run, and I was, and I just write back, same. <laughs> <laughs> I called it a death march. Yeah, right. So, 10 yeah. mile run, just recovery. She's a different breed, y'all. <laughs> How about you? Where do you like to run outside? I love Central Park. I, I was going to say West Side Highway too, but then, but my second favorite would definitely be uh, Central Park. The reservoir is just so beautiful. Mm. It's hard not to stop and take pictures, honestly. Yeah. As it's... long as you're going the right way, though. True. One way. And they're <laughs> very, very strict about that. You yes. can only run in one or walk in one direction around the reservoir. Do not try and go the other way. Be warned. <laughs> I did Warning, once. warning. Yeah. Everybody tells you off. <laughs> <laughs> as an expert in as an expert in running far, and as we're trying to learn how to run far, <laughs> yes. uh, whether it be a 5K or 10K or marathon, are there any like hard rules to follow when you are starting to train for a distance run? Oh my God, so many, mm -hmm. so many. Um, honestly, it gives a minefield when you start. Um, I, we've all been beginners. I I talk very much about. Everyone's a beginner. If you're not a beginner in something, you've stopped learning. And to me personally, if you stop learning, you're stagnating a little bit in life. You've always got to be learning to progress. And so for me, I would if like, if I was going to go and train for a 5K, I'm going to have to go back to beginner level because I would go out the gates and be so slow because the start of a marathon, you don't go out fast. So you're just like cruising along. Um, so a beginner starting out on any distance, I would say take your first month as an experiment and learn like you have to be ready to learn and the first time we do anything like probably the first time we all learned to cook we burnt something we hated it we were like screw this i'm having takeout for the rest of my life and with running is the same thing you're going to go on a run whether it's like once around the track or a 5k that you hate and it will happen over and over again but that is part of the learning process and you have to take that in and you have to use it as a chapter in that journey and accept the hatred and then accept that when you hate it, you're always gonna have the love of it on the other side because you will progress if you keep going at it. But you have to have that humility to, to scale it back. Yeah. You can't think that if you're going out to start a, a 5K training journey, you can't just go for a 5K run. It's not gonna work like that because the unfortunate thing is injury is so much more prevalent in people who do that, who are just like, all right, I've got an ego. I'm just gonna go out and do it. I don't know why I said it in that kind of voice. No <laughs> offense to <laughs> But it just feels like, you know, if you if you bite off more than you can chew, you're gonna choke. And it's the worst thing you can do when it comes to health and fitness. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and there's no such thing as technical like feed, uh, failure. Like failure yeah. is feedback. So yeah. it's information, as Bex was just saying, it's like that first month, you're gonna fail. And the mindset, I to me, running is so mental like so mental. I actually have a book called The Mind Gym and my mom actually got it for me in high school and I ha I still have it and I started rereading it because I feel like something that I, I constantly talk about is just like your body can handle the load that you're putting on usually. It's your brain that's like, I'm tired, I'm hungry, like this is too much, my calf hurts, you know, like. I'm bored. Yes, I'm bored, like what, yeah, what are we gonna do tonight, you know? So I think that the mind is something that you really have to train also while you're running. Like I used to, dissociate and I used to think about like just random things to keep my mind occupied and now I do the polar opposite. I try to stay super present mm -hmm. um, and whenever I'm not present, I do a body scan. I literally think about what how everything feels from tip to toe. Um, <laughs> yes. I learned from my great teammates. Um, and that is something that is really, really crucial. And then that way you can feel like, okay, yeah, my heel was kind of feeling a little bit funky. Like maybe I was landing like really dramatically on my heel and I need to land more midfoot. Um, but just like having that constant dialogue with yourself and giving yourself feedback um, is really super important. And then the other thing too, when you're training for a race is recovery and strength training. So I know we'll talk a little bit more about that, but want to plant that seed in. Perfect segue. <laughs> no, that's, that's beautiful. Perfect. Um, well, yeah, let's just go off of that. It's almost <laughs> like when I talk to distance friends, it's almost like pulling teeth. It's like, all right, we need to start weight training or lift something, you know? Mm -hmm. So what's your guys' philosophy or how can you stress the importance of strength training? Hmm. I mean, it's important for sure. Um, I mean, I don't strength train very often, to be honest. I used to, 
Um, I got rewind years ago and I was training to be on a bikini body stage. Like I was all about different bars. <laughs> and like it was lifting heavy, getting as big as I could um, and finding a different body in that respect. And I loved it. And I missed that side of physical strength but I found a different physical strength through running. And now it's a very different strength training. So um, again, Jess and I were talking about, well, we always talk about stuff like this, but for running, I find it hard when people are like weight training and running. I'm like, no, it's not necessarily how you want to think about it. It's strength training. And again, I, you're going to hear me say this freaking word specificity all the time, but it is, you have to train strength training for running. It's really important. It is really, you've got to put your ego aside about, oh, I can squat, whatever, however many, like I can't even think however heavy it is. But like, it doesn't matter. No, no runner will care how heavy you can squat because it's about time, how fast your body can be. And that doesn't necessarily mean you need to be light. There are some like ripped runners out there, some heavier runners now, but it, you have to think about how your body works, how it works biomechanically to be the most efficient for you. And if that means you have existing calf injuries or knee injuries, then you have to think about the muscles that are supporting those joints and how to strengthen those muscles to make them strong to get you through your chosen distance. And most runners, you're a flamingo. You're on one leg or you're flying. So, you know, you've got to think, okay, how can I make my legs strong one at a time? So even, okay, yeah, you can go to the gym and lifting some weights is great at the start of your training. Running training is always split up into different parts. There's always going to be probably about three sections of your training after you set up your base. And the first two sections are going to be the time you're going to be okay in the gym, still having weights in your hands or on your back or whatever. <laughs> on your back, do you do that? <laughs> back squat. Back, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but then after that, your final, like your last couple of months, you're really going to be probably working with your body weight a lot more. Or it's best to be working your body weight or lighter weights and single leg. Flamingo. Just think flamingo the whole time. You're brushing your teeth, you're on one leg. You're waiting in line, you're on one leg. You do anything. Honestly, I cook and I'm on one leg. And... Like a Rocky montage on like one foot, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like the amount of people who come up to me and like, I just, I was brushing my teeth last night and I was thinking of you. I'm like, creepy, but okay, why? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I suddenly was standing on one leg. And it just, you know, you got to work these things in. But um, I mean, Jess has an incredible history and experience with weight training and strength training. And from now, like us both working together at Peloton and the things we're, we're all doing on the running side, working in with each other's experiences to make the body efficient and strong is how, how we are at Peloton. That's our most important thing. Because if you ignore strength training, that's when the injuries are more likely to yes. come in. That's probably would be my biggest piece of advice. Very you can't good. ignore it, but you can't do too much. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and yeah, 100%. And I think that it's so important to... To remember, like, just sensical things. Like, if you can't be squatting super heavy when you have your long run the next day. It's just, like, more common sense things like that. And I think the Peloton uh, Marathon training prep program that just launched is incredible because not only do we focus on the single leg stuff and the strength for runner stuff, but the recovery stuff is huge. Yeah. And it's not just recovery, like, basic foam rolling, which you should definitely do. Foam, roll foam rolling is really important. But we even have active recovery for your feet active recovery for your shins because the most common running injuries are plantar fasciitis on the foot and then shin splints. And it usually is when those kinds of injuries do occur when the, the training program isn't really great for you. Like if you're going out, if you're running too fast and you're running too much, you know, you're going for a 30 minute run when you should be going for a 20 minute walk plus run. Um, and so we have all of these amazing classes, five or 10 minutes. Um, so there's really no excuse why you can't do it because by the time you feel pain in a certain part of your body, Yes, you want to address the pain, but you need to figure out the site of the, the source of it, which is usually above or below. So if you're having the shin and calf pain, it's usually an ankle foot issue or a knee issue or potentially a hip issue. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely have to really break apart your, not literally break apart your legs, but you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like break apart the, like how you focus your recovery and your strengthening. Uh, your strengthening. Definitely. Be strong enough for you to climb that mountain. Yes. Be strong enough to prevent some of these injuries. Yeah. Yes. And then you're perfect on the segues as far as recovery. Oh my gosh, look at me. The, uh, like the foam rolling, the <laughs> foam rolling, massaging your feet. It's like <laughs> yes. it's the most painful thing and definitely the least sexy thing out there. I call it like flossing your teeth. Mm. Yeah, like, they call it flossing. No one does it, right? That's yeah. So I'm so glad that flossing you highlighted the, the importance yeah. of yeah. recovery. Yes.
<laughs> oh yeah, recovery. Yeah. Is there I anything, mean... uh, any tricks or tips <laughs> that you guys do for recovery? Is I'm as the recovery as... queen. I, Bex, Bex doesn't recover very. <laughs> Distance runners. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I mean, I got we got off the plane at um, what three thirty yesterday, and I was getting massage at six thirty, because so, I mean, sitting on a plane for that long is also not yeah. ideal. But also, um, I we do self care multiple. I mean, I do it daily, and then we also um, Peloton really emphasizes it. So we have to go get a massage, acupuncture, physical therapy, something every single week, um, because our body is a I machine. Feel a lot backed up. Yeah. <laughs> It's just so important because it's one of those things where I tell people to do it proactively. Before you start to have pain, you should be foam rolling. You should be doing mobility. You should be doing, um, if you need to, if there is something sore, you know, icing, heat. There are so many different ways that you can prepare your body, not only to have a better workout, but to recover better after. So when we get on the tread or before every strength class, we always talk about take your pre-run warm-up. Mm. Why? Because, yes, we warm up in every single one of the classes, but it's so important to have targeted exercises. So in our, our pre-run warm-up, we um, target the the calves, the hamstrings, the quads, and the glutes. Why? Because especially the glutes, because we don't run laterally, right? We run forward and back, and so we need to wake up our hips and our glutes and challenge them in different ways so that we don't have hip injuries and, and things like that. So um, you do all of that before you get onto the tread, and of course, the, the tread warm-up is meant to get your blood flowing and then get you a little bit warmer. I call it the glazed donut look because you mm -hmm. want to be like a little shiny. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I, no joke, it's so funny, it's so funny, that th I joke, the things that, you know, that come out of your mouth when you're running on a tread, like in front of thousands of people, you just, <laughs> I said it one time in class, and no joke, like, I got tagged in so many things on Instagram, like the glazed donut look. I was like, wow, I guess that works. It's a thing. That. So yeah, that's yeah. like a thing now. So the glazed yeah. donut look, um, that we get you there on the tread, but that's not enough to really target the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, the glutes, and things like that. So, um, and then on top of having a better workout, because you did that pre-run warm-up, if you do that pre-run warm-up and a post-run stretch after your recovery is gonna be so much better. Definitely. So it's just, it's all a process. It's all very purposeful and strategic and we really encourage it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I encourage definitely that side of things, the warm up. There's no, there's no going out and starting a run. Like you guys know for sure, for track, you're just gonna, it's probably a given. If you just went out on the track, you're gonna pull something yeah. if yeah. you're not warm. And the same goes for a long run. You need to have, we have the pre-run uh, warm up classes. We also have warm up runs, which are five or 10 minutes, where it's just a gentle increase in your pace up to a high end of a jog or a light run. And then that gets the blood pumping. And like we all know, if you run, right, the first, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of any run, if you just go out of your front door and you go, you're like, what is wrong? This is awful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're just dragging, you're breathing, and like, am I gonna have a heart attack? What's wrong with me today? And then you settle into your rhythm. So that's the thing about having that warm up time. You can get rid of all of that the in you, yeah. and you can settle into your run when actually your run run starts and feel good and confident that your body is warm and and ready to rock. Nice. Well, we were talking about recovery uh, yeah. and warming up for the body specific specifically. How do you guys think about fuel as far as uh, whether it's sleep or food? How do you guys kind of incorporate Ooh, that stuff? And what yeah. are some big takeaways and tips that you can give again the normal people? Yes, yeah, sleep. <laughs> the every no, everybody, yeah. regardless Sleep. of whatever level you're at, brand new or in it for years, sleep. And taking a day off. What is wrong with society right now in that we have to train every day? Yeah. It is not necessary. Like We are always at Peloton like, take a day off. It's absolutely okay to take a day off. And it's probably gonna do you better to take a day off or at least just do if you if you really want to do it because you want some of your own time. Perhaps you've had a busy week and you want to just go and do something. Go for a walk. Go for a nice like take one of the walking classes or a hike maybe, and just have that downtime. Take an outdoor session walk. Um, but sleep for me, I'm a sleep junkie and I'm not afraid to say it. It's like the days I don't have to get up early, there is no alarm. I will sleep until like somebody drags me out of bed <laughs> or something. Yeah, sleep, I mean, sleep is so important. That's when yeah. your body repairs itself. So mm -hmm. like that's a huge, huge, huge. huge. Um, yeah, for sure. And then also other in terms of other fueling, um, we get asked all the time about like, what food do you eat? And like, can you share your meal plans? And we actually steer away from that in a lot of ways because what works for us might not work for you. Mm. It's one of those things where you need to like spend time getting to know yourself and again, failure is feedback. So if you eat something before you run and then like your stomach is in knots the whole time, you don't eat that the next time. Like, but that might feel great for me. Um, for me personally, I will share just like a general piece is I don't like to run or work out hungry. 
I don't like to work out full, but if I'm feeling like at all, like I'm hungry and I have a big appetite, I have to have something like a go macro bar, something with mm -hmm. readable ingredients, a banana with peanut butter, um, yeah. something small, but just to make, because I, I feel like nauseous sometimes when I work out without, on a completely empty stomach. Yeah. But then again, like when I teach, I teach six and 7 a.m. classes, generally speaking, I'm fine. So I don't need to eat anything before that, but I definitely dig in after. Yeah. Um, it's important to really replenish with proteins. Um, carbs are your friends. Don't let anyone tell you that carbs are not good for yeah. you. They are necessary. Um, um, and then, good cups. Good yes, cups. yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, not to say, yeah. My biggest thing is just eat as clean as you can. If you do eat something from a package, make sure you can read the ingredients. Um, and just uh, really try to eat what's in tune with your body um, and don't just copy someone else's meal plan because you'll figure out you might have little dietary um, sensitivities and things like that. Well, yeah, we'll talk more about, well, I like how you guys talked about, you know, trial and error, so like finding out what's good for you, either yeah. pre-run or post-run, all that stuff. Um, how about, like, let's talk about, oh. Yes, so okay, it. sorry, I got it. When uh, Bex was saying take a day off, um, I was at a training a couple weeks ago, and the best thing that I've heard in a while is we need to exercise less and move more. Yeah. And just, like, think about that for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Hush, like everyone, yeah, a moment a of silence. A moment another of, one. No, yeah. But no, for real though, because I think I mean, that when we think a day off, we think we have to be like this on a couch oh God, like no. all day long and like yeah. that's a day off. As Beck said, like go for a walk, do yeah. yoga, just stretch. Literally, instead of sitting on your couch on your day off, yeah. sit on the carpet and do like, we have a bunch of different mobility classes and things like that, but just moving your body in just different ways without exercising is so important. So oh, important, for sure, oh my God. Every time, because they, they, people say this because when we exercise, our cortisol levels go up and cortisol is a stress on the body. It's produced, it's a hormone produced in the body and the more intense your exercise is, the more cortisol you're going to produce. So that's why it's like a lot of people think it's okay on your day off to just Netflix and chill. But it's, it's, it's the polar opposite. Actually, what you want to do is get that movement in, get that lovely, get your body down from that cortisol high and just remember that oh, life's peachy, it's fine. I could just walk. This isn't stressful, but I'm still moving. There's Active still recovery. blood pumping. Yes. Yeah. So there's the yes. sleep where you're mummified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but exactly. you actually need to move a little bit just to flush mm -hmm. it out and you know be yeah. intentional about that. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And intentional, intentional about diet as well. You know, you can hype this up and you know obviously write books about all this, but you know it comes down to just like um, you know eating natural. Yeah. Right? Um, and same with the training though. Just move more and. Yeah. What was that one again? Exer bomb. Yeah, exercise less and move more. There you go. So you yeah. can keep it as simple as you can, right? Yeah. And that, that's the base. That's the base of the pyramid. And you can get super specific as you go along. So that's cool yeah. that you can go deep in, yeah. in yeah. general at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Cool. I think we're going to wrap it up with just one more lightning round question before we start Q&A. Um, I don't know why I did this, but uh, the first couple <laughs> questions are going to be all music related. So those will oh. be those ones. Oh. You guys ready for it? Do it. I, lightning nervous. round before we open up to the, to the audience for questions. So what is your favorite hype up song? Oh, no. I'm a boss. I'm a boss by? Um, it has so many different artists in it. It's hip hop. <laughs> okay. Or, okay, but most recent, Wish Wish by Cardi B. Oh yeah, that's that's there my first one. I literally like don't stop playing it. Yeah, I was gonna say I like it by Cardi B. That's my most recent one. Um, or Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Okay. Loving that. But original, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heads will roll. Okay. Oh. And then how about maybe a little bit different? What's your go-to karaoke song if you had one? Oh my God, you guys, Spice girls wanna be. I'm with you. I'm with you. This voice does not sing. I will break every mirror in the room. <laughs> okay. Uh, spirit animal. Ah. <sighs> Penguin. A penguin? I'm embarrassed to say, well, my dog, Sienna, I was going to say, so if anyone follows me on Instagram, she's like my spirit animal, but then I, the first thing that just came to mind was a sloth. I don't know why. <laughs> that was really weird. I don't... You're losing but street cred, fight, quick. That was yeah. weird. It's like Sienna, sloth. Okay, cool. It's like penguin. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Pancakes or waffles? Oh, pancakes. pancakes. Wow. And no French hesitation. toast. And French toast. Yeah, you didn't okay. add that in there, French but I'll add it. Like, you're just going in. <laughs> and then maybe the last one. If Breakfast. you can run with any celebrity, who would it be? Kevin Hart. David Letterman. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good one. I like the lightning round. <laughs> that was fun. Go, go, go. All right. Cool. Well, uh, we're now lining up for questions from the audience. If anyone has any questions regarding starting their journey or, <laughs> or running specifically. Ask us anything. Yeah, come on. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for coming. Oh. Uh, I've taken your outdoor classes Yay! and have gotten a few PRs here and there, running yes! on a few segments. Uh, love the Houston hip hop. Uh, hey! So, thank you. so keep it coming. <laughs> uh, my question is actually first: Do you guys do any of the cycling classes? Because 
Great question. Uh, that'll kind of depend on where I go with the second part of it is, who's your favorite uh, Peloton cycling trainer? And if you don't want to answer that, oh. what's your favorite style of class uh, or music to listen to at the class? Yes. Um, I, I, we don't teach them. We don't teach right. cycling classes, but um, taking them sporadically, yes. Um, if I'm not in training for a race, then I will. Otherwise, I cannot walk for a while <laughs> after taking cycling class. Um, my favorite style of class is definitely like more of an interval, the Tabata style of thing, because it's short. <laughs> Put me on a climb or something on a bike, and I'm like, I'm unclipped. I'm getting out. I'm done. Um, I love the short burst because it really does test me cardiovascularly. It's so different to running sprints um, and just the whole fact that like, you can move your body up like get out of the seat and just go and like ah it's all so intense so that would be my yeah my favorite side of it yeah it's tough uh, so we have the luxury of of course taking the classes in studio and um at my apartment um at home we have a couple bikes mm -hmm. and but it's so tough because we also teach on the tread five days a week and we might have like i i taught a 60 minute run on saturday but then other days it's like a little bit lighter so it's tough like fitting them in, but when we do, I love hip hop rides, shocker. Um, <laughs> and because when I go and take a cycling class, I want it to be fun and just like carefree. I actually don't go for intervals, I go for like the groove ride and just like the fun kind of thing. And my favorite instructor, I will not name drop uh, because, I, because depending on my mood, it depends who I want. Like yeah. there, you know, you know the instructor that's gonna push you and that's gonna like say some stuff, and then you have the instructors that are gonna be like silly and funny and just like talk about random things. Like Cody Rigsby talks about Paula Abdul while he's riding, and I'm like, yes, like just takes me out of my own head. And like Robin mm. is like, you're a boss, and I'm like, hell yes, I am. So it's like <laughs> depending on what mood I'm in is yeah. who I choose to yeah. ride with. Yeah. <laughs> Hi all, thank you so much for coming. Yay. Um, in your sort of fitness journey especially coming from the perspective of, of folks in the room who've had challenges reaching their fitness goals. What has been your biggest challenge, that biggest hump that you had to get over in yourselves in being able to reach the goals that you had set for yourselves? Oh, um, for me, it would be um, signing up for my first ultra marathon, in, living in London, and just not, the schedule I had when I lived in London was quite full on. I'd, I'd have private clients in the morning. I'd be teaching at Equinox in during the day and sort of afternoons I'd have off, but then you're planning or at a, a laptop. And then at night, I no normally had a Nike run of some sort. And I just didn't know how, like, to me, I'm like, I'm gonna have to run to my parents' house, which is like 300 miles away to get these runs in. Um, and then during the middle of that, I actually tore my VMO. So in amongst training for this massive race, which was up and over a volcano in La Palma in the Canary Islands, I was just like, I live in a flat area. There's no volcanoes. It's cold, it's wet. I have barely any hours left in the day to run. And then I tore my VMO. And that's when I actually did go back to cycling, got on a bike and started training my cardiovascular health that way. Um, and then just had to find the weirdest things. Like I'd never before gotten a train out of London to Windsor and ran back to London from Windsor. I just had, I didn't think about that and I just had to expand my mind and talk to other people who'd done training like this um, and look at the geography of where I lived, of running, you know, the go-to for me was to run along the river perhaps. But somebody said to me, do you know the canals go all the way up to the Midlands from London? It's like, oh, yeah, of course, that's a really long way. It literally is up to where my parents live in the middle of England. And so I just started running up along all the canals and I'd never done it before and it, it really overcame my fear of wanting to do something crazy but my geography my environment stopping me and it yeah it was a really nice way of okay overcoming it once my knee healed <laughs> yeah. um yeah that's a great great story um I would say so two different um perspectives on it as a college athlete I tore my ACL uh, my junior year it was horrible um my junior year we were up at Bates and um, tore my ACL, it was the quarterfinals, and we lost the next game. We won that game, but we lost the next one. And I was devastated. Um, I suffered, I, I, don't, I was not clinically depressed, but I definitely was depressed after that. I had surgery a month later, um, and I realized how much 
the mental comes into your performance. Because even though I rehabbed my ass off and I came back for my senior season up here, I was like, be careful. Oh, you tore it because you were anticipating a pass. Don't do that again on the court. Or like that court was super sticky. Uh oh, this court is super sticky. So I think that I really tapped into the mental training behind things then, um, which carries on to today, uh, which carries on the tread, on the mat, like when I was a teacher in the classroom, um, you you win your workout, you win the rest of your day. And so I really try to like build myself up during the workout um, and then bring that into the rest of my life. Um, so I would say that that's the thing there. And then I was going to mention um, with being an adult, <laughs> Uh, staying on track with your fitness goals, so like the non-athletic side, like I mentioned before, I went from doing two a days to working out two times in six months. Um, you, the the parallel between teaching in a classroom and teaching fitness is, I, I would always say, I don't believe in, I don't believe there's such thing as a kid who doesn't like to read. They just haven't found the right book. I feel that there's no such thing as an adult who doesn't like to work out. They just haven't found the right workout. Mm -hmm. So. I think that it's so important to figure out if you love boxing, you box your ass off. You love running, you run. You love lifting, you lift. And within each of those things, you're not gonna love every one of the workouts. Not every workout that you do is gonna <laughs> feel like Disney World and it shouldn't uh, because then you're not pushing yourself as hard as you could be or should be. Um, you find your ugly in whatever, whatever workout that you choose and you go with it. And some days are gonna get ugly and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so hard, I don't know if I can do it. And then you do it and then the next day you're like, wow, now I, this today is gonna be more of like that active recovery type thing. So just kind of accepting where you are, stop judging yourself, stop labeling yourself and get on with it. Cool, so this might be slightly self-serving and more for Ooh. Jess, but um, so I was, I did college athletics as well. Yay. And my transition out, I felt like I felt the same way as you did. Like you lose yourself. You're like, what am I without my sport? Um, so my question is, have you found something that you love just as much as basketball? And any advice you could give those who are kind of transitioning or going through a life transition in that way? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And it's funny, by speaking about the college experience, um, college athletics experience, not being a runner, Running was a punishment. Like with basketball, you <laughs> lost, you run. You're late, you run. The, you know, our coach had a bad day, you're running. And so like to me, again, the mindset of it was like, this is no longer a punishment, which is like linked to the you don't have to, you get to type of thing. And what I, when I was reflecting back on college athletics is that, yes, I love the sport of basketball. I love watching it. I love playing it, all of that. But I love being part of a team. So I think that Peloton is so, it's it serves the same purpose that, being a part of a team served for me back in college and, and before it because when I'm done with the class, it's not like that workout is done and over with. I come back and I look at my phone and I have a bunch of messages from people all over the world that have taken the class. And this isn't just like my experience. If you today took a class and you high five someone, you could go to the Facebook group and find that person. And no lie, like our homecoming, we have an annual homecoming where thousands of people come from all over the world and they're meeting their best friends that literally are now best friends simply because they work out at Peloton together. Together. It's so and amazing. that is it's literally mind-blowing yeah. in the most beautiful way because when we get older you know of course I'm still best friends with a lot of people that I was friends with in high school and college but you in your adulthood you find a new group of friends that share common interests and things like that and Peloton just brings people together so I think that my love of being part of a team and being part of a community is what that drives me people are like how do you get on the tread every day and teach I'm like for you guys yeah I don't do it for myself. There are times where I'm like, I could totally call him sick. Like, I'm not feeling this. But then I'm like, no, like, this, <laughs> these are people that are celebrating their milestones with us. Like, they're celebrating yeah. their birthdays. And it's, you don't want to let them down. But also, it, it gets you up off the bed, the couch, whatever. So I would just say, like, find what you, fi try different workouts, try different things, and stick with it and find your community. Yeah. Join, join Peloton. Join Peloton. Oh, yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> we might have time for just one more question. I have a pretty basic question, um, but I think all of us as Googlers, we're very focused on our work and then also like to work out on the side or maybe like in between work. You were both in the non-athletic professional world mm. prior. Do you have any tips for like 
working out and then being able to go back and being like more presentable, I feel like it's a lot more difficult as a yeah. female than as a male. Like men, they just jump in the shower. Like women, like your makeup gets all messed up. Your hair is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm with you. I'm Embr with you. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embra yeah. I, have, I would much rather have gotten in my 30 minute workout and have my hair in a messy bun and looking all sideways going into a meeting than not get it in yeah. that time because it's yeah. your time. Yeah. Like think about it. When you work out, it is your time. I say this all the time when I'm working out like in teaching. Forget everything else that's going on. This is your safe space. Like, forget about the worries, the concerns, the stresses, all that other stuff. Like, what other, what other time other than when you're sleeping, when you're not really consciously knowing that you're spending time with yourself, are you able to say, like, I'm getting stronger physically and mentally right now? Yeah. So I would say, like, um, I worked, I, I experimented. I'm not an, an evening workout person, so I just woke up really early in the morning. And guess what? It did suck some days, but I never regretted it. No, I've never regretted waking up early for a workout. So yeah. you have to find the time. And give yourself like two weeks of doing it before you say whether or not it's going to work for you. Because so many people are like, well, I did it for two days and the third day I gave up. Well, don't they say it's habit forms after 13 or 14 times of doing something? At least, at yeah. At least 13 or 14 times a habit can start to form after doing something. So if you set your alarm at the same time for those four, even the weekends, like the weekends are the same. You've got to do it continuously. Get up, do that workout. Um, but on a side note, I worked with a lot of people in London, a lot of companies who were experimenting with um, allowing their... Uh, employees a little bit extra lunch breaks to work out, do whatever they wanted because their productivity was going through the roof because they were getting blood flow to their bodies. They weren't stagnating at their desk. They weren't working through their lunch breaks and exhausted then for that three o'clock meeting, which was an ideas or an innovative meeting. And they're just like, huh, what? Yeah. No. And so I think, I mean, I, I for, on, your, on your note, dry shampoo and screw, <laughs> screw the makeup. Just screw yeah. the makeup. Don't worry. It's fine. You're beautiful. Like, literally, it doesn't matter at all. Red face. I get racing stripes when I run and train really hard. Like, and I'm kidding you not. I get white here and red here. And my old trainer used to be like, that's a sign of a great session. I know you've killed it today. And I used to be so embarrassed walking out of the gym. Like, people are going to be thinking I'm weird. And now I'm like, I own it. I'm like, yes, I'm strong. I've really worked hard. And so that's that would be my thing. Like, literally... Have that quick shower. Get the shower in because that will make you feel like you're okay. And, yeah. But like the quickest shower you can, bang that hair up, put it up and just walk in because that glow that you'll have from what Jess is saying, that self-satisfaction of having gotten out, done that workout, you won't need makeup. You won't need anything. You'll just be like, I'm ready. People will be looking at you like, man, your ideas are through the roof right now because your brain is awesome and you're just going to be glowing. Like, yeah. This is great. So. And, yeah, and it's so funny our own perspective because if you walked, if we were, you know, in a meeting and you walked in and you were sweaty, if anything, I would be envious that you just worked out. Yeah, completely. <laughs> I, and I don't know if that's because I'm used to being around sweaty people like my whole life, like from sports yeah. and stuff. But like, I'd be like, damn, like she yeah. got her workout in already. Like, okay, I'm yeah. gonna do that. Damn it, I was eating that bagel. So in your, in your <laughs> head, you're thinking I look crazy and all this. Other people are like, damn, she got yeah. her workout in. Yeah. So yeah. own it. Oh, no, for Perfect sure. plug for GFIT, everyone. Yeah. Uh, invest in yourself, right? Invest yes. in yourself. Yeah. Right? So that's perfect. Go get that Peloton app and yeah. whatever you are. <laughs> all, all of our plugs. Right? Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> well, perfect. I think that's it for time. Thank you guys both so much for coming. We're Thank so excited. Thank you guys so Thank much. You.